Hi guys, it's Aaron from Holcroft Nissan in Stoke-on-Trent and today it's my pleasure we have the long-awaited introduction of the new Nissan Duke Hybrid and Connector and this is the car. We've been waiting for this for a long time. It is a fully operational hybrid and there are some key differences that just give away that sign so you know exactly which car it is you're looking at and that starts from the front because we get this band that runs across the top of the grille and that grille is slightly angled just to give it better aerodynamics especially when it's in EV mode because this car will drive off the battery for a set period of time and, it, and that changes as the car is moving around. We get the new Nissan logo as well which is part of the Nissan Next strategy which is just on the front that just gives it that little bit more of an update and a more of a premium look and feel. As we move around to the side, you're going to notice that you get 17 inch diamond cut alloys on this and it's got beautifully chunky tyres which are going to give it a much better ride around our roads in the UK, especially over potholes, bumps, grids. And from the side you can even see that there are some slight changes such as the hybrid logo just down here and then we have the black mirror caps, the black A-frame and also the black at the rear to give it that floating roof effect and this colour is the brand new magnetic blue which has just come to the Duke, it's a much deeper blue and it looks absolutely phenomenal. In terms of engine size, this is a 1.6 automatic with the assistance of the battery. Now the battery does sit in the boot of the car, so the boot space is slightly reduced, but nothing to worry about at all in terms of a major size change. But this, it puts out 143 brake horsepower, which when we take this out for a drive, you're gonna see exactly what that can do. So when you get in, the first thing you're going to notice in the end connector is that you get these half leather and half cloth seats which are fantastic, especially in the winter because we all know that uh, leather is red hot in the summer and very cold in the winter when we get in. But there are some key differences inside. So obviously we'll work from bottom to top, just down to your right hand side and you'll see it in the dash, you get an e-pedal button. Now e-pedal's fantastic because every time that you brake, well, you take your foot off the accelerator in fact, the car is going to regenerate charge back into the battery. So what that's going to do is allow us to drive more in EV mode. So personally I use e-pedal all of the time. It is slightly different from the Leaf because it won't bring you to a complete stop. But I must admit, once you've got used to it, you won't go back. We still get the, the different drive modes, so normal, sport and eco, which can be used down here. And when we go into reverse, that activates the front and rear parking sensors. And you also get the rear camera here. But to be honest, even when you're in drive, if you're pulling up to something at the front, those parking sensors are going to be on waiting just in case. This is still the same as the existing model because you've still got your temperature and your fan speed in the same side and your direction of airflow. But you do have USB and a power point down here as well as an auxiliary input for your phone. So this car does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you need it. The hazard button is still in exactly the same place but slightly differently. You've also got an EV mode so that is going to make sure that the car is in EV mode as much as it possibly can and we'll, we'll demonstrate that shortly. As you move up to here you've got the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which you've mentioned. You do get digital radio so you've got DAB with all those new channels and you've also got Bluetooth audio if you don't want to use your phone on USB integration. Then, as we move on to the steering wheel, we've got automatic lights and all of the lights on this car are LED from top to bottom. So, you know, where are you going to get that sort of premium process and premium design? Anyway, you're not. It's, it's amazing what they've managed to do. Now, as we go on to the steering wheel, we've got the TFT monitor, which is this huge dash here. And as you can see, we can also monitor the energy flow from the battery to the engine and see how that's performing. And we've also got a digital speedo, satellite navigation and traffic sound recognition. So if you're driving around somewhere you don't know what the speed is, it does happen. You can look just down at your dash and it's going to tell you and it's going to stop any of those pesky fines that we all hate. On the right hand side we've got the, the cruise control and the speed limiter. And obviously that is so useful whenever you're on the motorway or even around town I use it quite a lot. 
And then just down here, we've got voice activation for your phone as well as answering end your calls. And on the right hand side, we also get automatic lights and wipers. So first thing I want to try is, as you can see, because we've, we've had it in EV mode, the EV mode has just gone off because the battery is too low. So what we're going to do is attempt to get some of that back. So we'll get buckled up and ready. And because the handbrake is electronic, we don't have to do anything, we can just drive off and away we go. So now we've got enough battery to be in EV mode and we're keeping that speed at just under 30 miles an hour. We're, this whole journey that we're doing now is completely on electric, which is self-generated by the car. As we go around here and we go up this sort of steady incline, we'll hear that the engine kicks in, the EV button will go off, but we are getting that torque assist from the battery. So even now, as I'm going up this incline, I'm still in complete EV mode. So all in all, I've not spent any money going from here to there. I know it's only a short journey, but all those short journeys add up over time. And as you can see, the EV mode has just kicked off because the battery's gone a little low and now the engine has kicked in. But if we were maintaining that down a down slope, then that wouldn't have happened. We would have just been in EV mode the, the complete time that we were in the vehicle. In terms of power, it's got plenty of power. It's got their electric torque assist on the engine. So if we need to, to get out of a situation, we can put our foot down. The car is gonna drop a gear because it's got kicked down and we're gonna be able to get out of those situations when we need to. We've just decreased speed steadily to come to that junction and it's put a little bit more charge in the battery. But now as we're gonna go downhill, we don't actually need to use the accelerator as much. So as we are coming down, you'll see that the car keeps flicking in and out of EV mode and it's not costing us a thing to drive around, which is incredible really, because the engine just isn't working. And another thing that we've noticed as we're driving around is actually all these little potholes, just go over this grid here, its impact of that's affecting the car is, is really quite low compared to what when we have a car that's got bigger alloys because we've got that rubber that's just absorbing the impact as we're going over. So in terms of ride height, you've got that nice ride height because you're slightly more up, but in t for comfort wise, it's absolutely wonderful because it's just absorbing all those bumps and everything that we're so used to in, in this country. This is surprisingly roomy. I've got plenty of room around me and I've got plenty of headspace considering that this roof slants backwards down to the rear to give it that sleek design, I'm not actually impacted because I'm not the tallest of people, but I've got plenty of knee room and plenty of headroom. And what makes it even better for children, you've got USB in the rear and Isofix just down here, which have got easily accessible ports because we can just lift the notch and we can get straight in. Now, because the existing Duke, one thing they learned from the original design was that they extenuated the wheels out at the back to give you more room to get your feet in and out of because at first it was really quite narrow and I'm a good size 10 foot so I can get out of there no problem at all. As we move on to the boot space obviously you do know it has been slightly reduced which is the depth of the boot not necessarily the width and that's because the battery sits underneath there now but in terms of a full boot room it's absolutely perfect because you get this shelf that sits in the top and you can store some storage underneath with anything that you possibly need but overall it's an absolute fantastic family little car. And that is a bite-sized review of the new Nissan Duke Hybrid and Connector. We are absolutely delighted to have this vehicle in our fleet. It is going to be an absolute treat to sell and a treat to drive for everybody that wants to come down. So if you are interested, please call one of our dealerships. We're well known as one of the best dealerships across the country for customer satisfaction and delivery of new vehicles. We've got branches at Hanley, Crew, and Northwich, and I'm sure one of our fabulous team will be absolutely delighted to get you into your new Duke.